Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I am going to share with you four amazing tricks and traps in the center game. Two are from the white side and two from the black side. So without wasting time, let's get started. We start with e4, black responds with e5 and now the center game when we play our pawn to d4. When he captures your pawn on the d4 square, you can immediately recapture it with the queen. Now knight c6 comes with an attack on the queen. This we are going to have a look at in four different variations. First, let's start by moving the queen on the a4 square. Now, when we go with the queen to a4, that is not more common, but okay, you can do it. The queen goes to e7, attacking the pawn on the e4 square. Now, you need to defend this pawn, so you go with your knight to c3, defending it. Knight f6, adding some more pressure on this pawn. And now, we can simply pin that knight by playing our bishop to g5. So that knight cannot capture it and you have removed one of the defender by pinning it. Now here if black tries to add some more pressure and play his pawn to d5, well you can just ignore the threat. And now you can go with the long castle. If he gets greedy and captures your pawn on the e4 square, then we can gobble up the queen. What can we do here? You capture it and give away the knight. If he thinks that we are doing a blunder and sacrificing a knight, he captures it with the queen, then comes the fantastic rook to d8 check. The king captures, the knight cannot capture the rook back as it is pinned. So the king will have to capture the rook. And once the king captures it, now you are winning the queen because this knight is pinned. He cannot capture it. And that's how you win an extra queen there. Okay, now coming back to, now let's have a look at the second trap from the black side. After e4, e5, d4, we capture the d4 square, the re queen recaptures it. Now knight c6 attacking the queen. Instead of going on the a4 square, the most common move here is to move the queen to e3. When white player moves his queen to e3 square, we can go with our knight to f6. Now knight f6 is a common move from black as we want to develop the knights before the bishop. Here if he places bishop to c4, trying to give an attack to your weak f we can simply play our knight to e5 attacking the bishop. The bishop drops back and you can go with the bishop to b4 give a check. If he blocks it with the bishop then it is a complete equal position for white and black. But most of the player and the common move here is to block it with the pawn as it also gives an attack to the bishop. So when he plays his pawn to c3 that is a complete disaster because now you can go with your bishop to c5 give it for free. If he captures the bishop then his queen is gone because knight to d3 comes with a fork. And if he defends the queen by going on the g3 square, trying to attack on your g7 square, then you can immediately sacrifice the bishop, play a bishop to f2, give a check and attack the queen. If the queen is going to capture it, then knight to d3 forks the king and the queen. And if the king captures it, then we can the other knight can join the party. We can give a fork by playing a knight to e4, attacking the queen as well as the king. So that's how you are going to win a queen from the black side too. Okay, coming back few moves. Now here after knight c6, queen going back on the e. Okay, so now coming to the trap number three. After knight c6, the queen drops back on the e3 square, which is the most common move. Now, instead of going knight f6, you can directly go with the bishop to b4 and give a check. After bishop b4, he will definitely block the check with his pawn and he can place pawn to c3. Well, then you can drop the bishop back on the a5 square. Now here, if he places bishop to c4, trying to attack your weak f7 square, we can go with our knight to f6. He places pawn to e5, don't worry about it. Can you ignore this threat? Is there a better chance that you ignore the threat at this point and then give a counter blow? Yes, you can do the short castle. If he gets greedy and captures your free knight on the f6 square, then rook e8 wins the queen for you. You are pinning and winning the queen. Okay, alright. Coming back to the white side, this is one of the game where white has given a checkmate in the center game using the same trap. So it starts with e4, black responds with e5, d4 and when he capture, you can capture it back with the queen. Now when he gives an attack to your queen, you drop it back on the e3 square. When he plays his bishop to b4 directly, you can play your pawn to c3. The bishop drops back on the a5 square and now you go with the bishop to c4. Insta here, instead of playing the knight to f6, he can develop the knight on the e7 square as well. So let's say he goes with his knight to e7 and now you can play your queen to g3, trying for the same thing, attacking on the g7 square with your queen. 
Now, if he defends it by simply castling, then you instead of going on the bishop to h6, that is not a checkmate because the knight can on g6 can block it any time. So you do a prophylactic move. He is going to play knight g6. You play pawn h4. Idea is to play pawn h5 and control that g6 square. Now, black might think that he is losing on the king's side, right? So he would want to get his pieces on the king's side. Let's say he brings his knight on the g6 square. You are going to go with your threat and play a pawn to h5, attack the knight. If the knight goes on the e5, attacking your bishop, ignore the threat and go and first attack his queen. Play your bishop to g5. The only the only way for the queen to save herself is to go on the e8 square, and then comes this beautiful bishop to f6, aiming for a checkmate on the g7 square. Again, the only way to defend the checkmate is to play the pawn to g6. And then you can simply capture on the g6 square with your pawn. If the pawn recaptures it, then rook to h8 is a checkmate. And if the knight block captures it, then you first capture the knight with your queen, sacrifice your knight, the pawn is now forced to capture. And then again, rook h8 is a fantastic checkmate. So these were four amazing traps in the center game. Uh, if you like our video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and share with your friends. I'll see you guys again in the next video.